It's 4.30 on WKYT This Morning. We're tracking the latest in Johnson County. That's where several people are still unaccounted for as crews continue to search through storm damage. Four people were injured when the storms rolled through the bluegrass and overturned a trailer in Fleming County. And we finally have some good news outside. No real storm chance for the next several days. I'll have that update coming up next. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you from WKYT and welcome in. We're glad you're with us. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Many are left with storm damage to clean up all across the state this morning. Could be drier and a little cooler out today, giving some storm victims relief. Yeah, finally, a chance mm -hmm. to uh, get out of this situation we've had with all of the storms. Let's go first to WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris for the update on that. Good oh, morning. Good morning, guys. It's going to be much drier. You will barely see one or two blips there on the radar as we approach the afternoon hours. It's really for the far southeastern zones, and that's about it. And even that is no thunderstorm threat, no washout by any means. So just a couple of sprinkles, a couple of light showers, and that's all. Far southeastern where the mountainous regions are. Rest of us, 95% of us, are looking pretty good. First alert defender live radar, there is your shot. Temperatures are in the 60s and 70s, kind of depending on where the cloud cover is. Look at Mount Sterling. Coming in at 64 degrees. This is going to be a very nice day as we're only looking at about a 10 20 percent chance of rain and temperatures right there around 80 degrees. Does this last? That is the question. I'll have that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Another round of powerful storms caused damage in several counties that were already hard hit by flash flooding over the last few days. Among them, Fleming County. Emergency managers say strong winds flipped a mobile home last night with four people inside. It happened along Cherry Grove Road near Flemingsburg. Other nearby buildings were damaged as well. Monique Blair continues our first alert weather team coverage. I don't know if it's a straight line land or a tornado. I don't know. Around 6 o'clock Tuesday evening, Brian Mitchell received a phone call telling him the home in front of his uncle's auto repair garage had just been hit by a storm that rolled through Fleming County. This is actually his garage where the trailer sits. Officials tell us four people were inside this trailer home when it overturned two adults and two kids. And there was two people in it when we got here, it was tracked in. But the kids had left and already went up to the house, but they was banged up a little bit. Mitchell says the woman was trapped inside by a toolbox. Me and Junior Marshall started to uh, help get them out to where they could get dug out to where they could get rescued. All four people were taken to the hospital. Officials say the extent of their injuries are unknown. They was able to talk. That battered up pretty good. Now, just to give you a visual picture of exactly what happened, the trailer that is sitting several feet behind me used to sit right here before the storm. In front of that big one, that guy did, and it took it. On the other. And almost immediately after this devastating storm hit this home, an auto repair garage, and the home behind it, the community jumped in to help clean up. I don't know where to go. Down there. Ready, ready, set, go. In Fleming County, Monique Blair, WKYT. A mess for those folks. Yesterday's storms dumped heavy rains in much of eastern Kentucky, a part of the state that just couldn't handle it. In many cases, this was the result. This is an eyewitness photo from the Birch Branch area of McGoffin County. Many people had to be rescued from their homes because of high water. At one point, Salyersville was under a flash flood emergency. Garrett Weimer has the latest from McGoffin County. I'm here on the county line between Morgan and McGoffin counties. It's an area here that's gotten hit quite hard with the last storm that came through. High water all over the road in places. In fact, on my way to Salyersville on 460, I had to turn around because cars just could not get through. In many places, drivers had to decide whether to turn around or try to drive through. Water flooded the road in several places in McGoffin and Morgan counties. It was flowing completely over the road in this spot, not far from the county line. We also know of several water rescues in Sawyersville. The owner of a farm in Morgan County tells me he has acres and acres of pumpkins and corn now completely underwater. He says it's the worst he's ever seen it, but it could be worse. You know, we're not dealing with loss of life or uh, property loss. We lost some pumpkins. And corn, and it's it hurts, but at the end of the day, you know, you got to be realistic about it, you know. And I told my wife Ashley that if we could make it through this little storm, 
we could uh, might be all right. But I didn't know it was going to be such a doozy. As for what's next, he says he hopes for some sunny skies in the next few days and some help from the insurance company. On the Morgan McGoffin County line, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you very much. Heavy rain and strong winds also blew through Johnson County last night, just a day after devastating flash floods turned deadly there. Homes were damaged or destroyed in the Flat Gap, as well as the Red Bush and Staffordsville communities. And this morning, emergency crews say at least six people are still unaccounted for. WKYT's Amber Philpot has more from there. Good morning to you. It has certainly been a very trying time for folks here in this community. Also, a very sad time as just yesterday we learned there was a second fatality due to this flash flooding. And while we saw storms roll in again last night and try to dampen the spirits of many people here, we also saw folks just trying to pick up the pieces. It rolled in with fury. A storm that was not a welcome sight to people devastated by flash flooding Monday in Johnson County. We got our lives, you know, everything else can be replaced, but you know, our lives can't. Guy Colvin didn't lose his home. It was badly damaged, though. He says the destruction near where he lives happened in the blink of an eye. My buddy's trailer hit was gone. Ramey Branch's trailer court hit was. You can see the debris everywhere. Colvin was one of many families who showed up to Johnson Central High School to find supplies. Something he's thankful for. It's so great that the community is coming together to do this. I mean, they come together when we had that tornado and everything else, and a lot of people expected they come together. That's one thing I can say about Johnson County. They do try to help people out. While there has been so much bad in this community, right where I am standing is so much good. Right here at Johnson Central High School, just yesterday we saw dozens upon dozens of people dropping off donations and supplies for people in need. And then we saw folks start to trickle in and pick up those much needed supplies as they start the cleanup process and getting their lives back together. That is the story here in Johnson County. Amber Philpot, WKYT. Amber, thank you so much. This morning we received this picture of Herman May, one of two people confirmed dead in the flooding. The coroner says the other is 74 year old Willa Pennington. Sky first flew over the flooded areas, getting this view from the air. Here's the latest from in Johnson County. Emergency crews confirming two people again have died in the flooding. And they say six people are still unaccounted for this morning. Investigators say at least 150 homes were destroyed and around 500 were damaged in all. The Red Cross has set up a shelter at the Paintsville Recreation Center. Rowan County was also hit hard by this week's storms. Some people are now without a home and have lost nearly everything. Kentucky Emergency Management reports that more than 60 homes were flooded in Rowan County. Residents say at one point this week, water was 10 feet above the road. One woman tells us she was trapped in her home while it was surrounded by water. It was just a few minutes. It was just a bonus, you know. And so we went back in the house and there was nowhere to go, you know. So. Uh, the only thing there was to do was to go upstairs. That was the only place there was left to go. Thomas says she's staying at a motel for now and will take it one day at a time. She advises folks who live near creeks and streams to invest in flood insurance. Unfortunately, she didn't have any. If you're in Rowan County and you need help, a temporary shelter has been opened up at the Carl Perkins Center in Moorhead on Creighton Jackson Lane. Knox County experienced its own share of storms and flooding, leaving some without power. Ernest Broughton tells us he was in his living room yesterday morning when he says lightning struck his home. He says the power was already out when the lightning struck, and now all of his electronics are destroyed. All at once, a big ball of fire came through the ceiling with a big loud boom that was in just a split second, and sparks flew all over the place. And uh, it was devastating. I mean, it was a terrible sight. Well, Broughton says he's thankful his wife and three kids are safe. He advises families to stay in one room without many electronics during any lightning related storms. Well, many of you have been helping us track storm damage and flooding with your eyewitness photos. Kim shared this picture from Pulaski County. She says the large tree fell in the Eubank community. It's pretty huge there as a storm moved through that area. And take a look at this photo from Mike. High water reached a home in West Liberty. 
Many streets around West Liberty were underwater at one point last night. Email your storm photos to eyewitness at WKYT.com or use the hashtag KYWeather. So a lot of dramatic scenes coming out of this yeah, storm. Yeah, memorable scenes. You know, you, 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 some people will never forget uh, some of what has happened this week, certainly. It is 440, 20 till 5 on WKYT this morning, and we're just getting started. A lot more is on the way. Farmers markets are a summer, summer staple. Moms Every Day shows us how to make the most of your next visit later in the show. Luckily, we are getting rid of the storms, and now we're looking at that cooler, drier air filtering on in. I'll show you how low we go with our temperatures and also how long we keep this dry air. That's coming up in just a few minutes.